I really appreciate you joining me again today. And don't forget to follow our sponsors, Alpha Claims and Hire, for all your rental and accident management purposes. This story comes from Southampton and it's a record-breaking seizure of cocaine that the police have taken yesterday. And they say it's worth on the street £302 million. It came from a Colombian banana boat and it's the biggest seizure in seven years, the NCA have said. Of course, they're exaggerating the amount that is seized, but to get a real understanding of the quantity, it is 3.7 tonnes. So regardless of how they exaggerate street value, it's still definitely a very big seizure. And sometimes you think you've had a bad day at the office, but today somebody has had a terrible day. The Home Secretary Preeti Patel said it was the largest seizure since 2015 and Border Force found the cocaine in pallets that were being imported into the country. In total, there's 20 pallets of bananas that they recovered cocaine from and they stacked it up and you can see from the picture the extent of how much they found. It was a joint operation by Border Force and NCA and they said in a statement that this was a monumental seizure of cocaine with a street value of over £300 million. The organised crime group behind this would definitely feel this in their pocket and this would have a massive impact on the supply chain. But this definitely makes you wonder the demand. This is coming just to this tiny little island, the UK, and they need this much cocaine to deal with the needs of the customers. I've covered several different seizures. Sometimes we've had two tonnes, one tonne, but I've never covered 3.7 tonnes imported into the UK. Last year, two consignments were found in Hastings and also New Haven in New Sussex, and a lot of parcels also wash up on the shore when they get dumped from boats as well. There was a case that I covered several months ago where they seized two tonnes of cocaine 80 miles off the coast of Plymouth. And this was due to the fact the police had hacked an encrypted mobile in Australia called Anom as well. And I've done several stories on Anom and the way that they this worked. It was similar to EncroChat, except the police actually took responsibility for actually creating it and also ensuring that it made its way to criminals across the world. Three men from the UK was arrested in connection to this and also five other men were arrested on the boat. The National Crime Agency, supported by Australian Federal Police, participated in that seizure as well. And since lockdown and during lockdown, we've definitely seen a massive increase in the attempts that people have made to get big amounts of cocaine into the country. And as I covered in the last story that I did about the sweet potatoes coming from Jamaica, there's so many different routes and so many different ways for people to get drugs into the country that it's sort of like whack-a-mole with the police they find one route and then somebody will create another so it'd be really interesting to see the effect that this has if it does have any and also any other stories please send to news at scarcitystudios.com and i'll try to feature as many as possible and don't forget to follow me online as well at scarcity studios on instagram tiktok twitter and facebook and i'll be back again very shortly with some more news peace Operation Ironside is a covert operation that the AFP has been running together with the FBI since 2018. We introduced a dedicated encrypted communications device into the global criminal marketplace. These devices have been modified um, so you can't make normal telephone calls, send text messages, access the internet. It even had um, applications, bogus applications installed on it to look like a normal telephone. What they do have is an application, in this case it was hidden behind another application, uh, a calculator. The thing I guess is surprising about this is how implicitly the criminals have trusted this platform. If they're talking about cocaine, they say cocaine. If they're talking about uh, weight measurements, they talk about weight measurements. If they're talking about money, they talk directly about the, the exact amount. So these are not coded conversations, they're, they're black and white. I think that this uh, will shock organised crime to its core, that the AFP and its partners have been able to capture all their um, communications, their plotting and scheming to traffic drugs, murder people, uh, launder the proceeds of crime, purchase assets, uh, all those things are now in the hands of the police. You can't go to a shop and buy this thing. You have to know a criminal with access to it and then essentially you go and buy it on the black market. Everyone's going to be trying to think of how they can actually create something like this and implement something like this into the market. For the first time we're actually getting a real behind the curtains look of how these criminal syndicates operate and how they actually exploit our vulnerabilities. 
We have seen crates of money coming from Perth to Sydney. We're talking millions of dollars being transported physically across the country as payment for shipments of drugs. For every 20 kilos of meth that you guys are stopping off the streets, you're saving a life. For every threat that you extinguish on the platform, you save a life. So if we look at the resolution of Operation Ironside, in some respects, it's not the end. It's, it's just part of the journey that we're on at the minute. We're in a long-term war here in terms of sophisticated and globalised organised crime. Among the first messages when I became the AFP Commissioner was to let the Australian people know that the AFP would work hard every day. To